Could you tell us a story? Let me tell you a wonderful and amazing story. Take your sandals off, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. The battle belongs to the Lord. I promise it is a true story. I know that this story is true. This is an amazing story. Son, all your sins are forgiven. Who can forgive sins but God alone? My life changed wonderfully because of Jesus and his healing power. I have heard this story about Jesus before, but I never really believed it was true. My friends, oh yes, it is true. I saw all those things happen. I now believe Jesus is the Son of God. Isn't that amazing? I think so. I want everyone to know what Jesus has done for me and what he can do for them. Would you like to hear some more? Well, good evening, everyone. My name is Mike Schrage, and I get the honor and the privilege of serving as president of GNPI. And we have a wonderful group here in Joplin, Missouri, and we welcome all of you online as well this evening for what we feel is a very unique and special collaborative effort. Collaborative in the sense that is something that we as people have worked with God, something collaborative that as you will hear us unpack the stories of a story within a story, there are so many fabulous ways that God has done just incredibly um, marvelous things to bring this, what we feel is probably the third largest project in the 45 year history of GMPI. We are also very honored tonight to have the founders of uh, GMPI, Zion and Helen Nutt with us here, as well as many of the staff and many of the rest of you as friends and partners in the ministry. We thank you very much. Amazing stories. That's what we're going to talk about for a few minutes tonight. And it is amazing, and I hope you really walk away with a feeling that you were not only involved in something historic as we dedicate it to the Lord's efforts and works globally and locally, but that it is something that we go, wow, if he can do that, imagine what he can continue to do in our own lives, our own ministries, and so forth. It has required patience on our parts. It has required, I think, patience on God's part. Uh, it is a probably 10 plus long endured race in order to get it to this point. And it has brought in a lot of resources of people on two different continents, of resources, gift and kind and financial on two different continents, technology use on two different continents. It has really been something that has, um, I think, just going to be fabulously used by the Lord Jesus Christ and for the work locally and globally. So. For all of us here and for all of you in welcoming, being welcomed online, we want you to enjoy this presentation. And now I want to welcome you to just look for a moment uh, at the story behind the story. Would you like to hear an amazing story that God's been writing for years? It starts with a missionary who wanted to share his love for God's word with children in East Africa. He decided to write a story of the raising of Jairus' daughter from an eyewitness perspective. He had a few books printed, but God had more in store for this story than this missionary ever would have imagined. His friends loved it so much that one story became a series of 10, all from the New Testament, which became known as Amazing Stories. But God still had bigger plans. My friends, oh yes, it is true. During a visit to Uganda, a pastor asked the missionary how much it would take to fund 10,000 copies of this children's book series in multiple languages. The estimated cost was $100,000. Within 24 hours though, that pastor had made one call and had all the money. A member of his congregation was dying and his wife had also passed away recently. They had no children of their own, so they wanted to bless this project to reach children. What a tremendous legacy. God's plans, still bigger. 
Enter GMPI, who suggested that these stories become animated videos to achieve an even larger reach through the internet. But wait. We're getting ahead of ourselves. The story of amazing stories actually goes back three decades. An international student from a Muslim nation found a clear calling to use gospel media in his country after visiting with GMPI founder Zaid Nutt in the Joplin office. Fast forward to a GMPI staff member traveling in a majority Muslim nation and noticing a globe outside a studio very similar to the one that sits in front of GMPI USA. <laughs> this, no coincidence. The studio was owned by that same international student. He had built a replica of the globe as a reminder of how God gave his life direction at that very spot in Joplin, Missouri, so many years ago. So partnership began for that studio to animate these amazing stories. Not only did God provide an option for affordable animation, <laughs> well, more affordable than in the US, but also the opportunity to serve the Muslim people. This connection was such an answer to prayer. Muslim families could learn about the love of Jesus in a culturally relevant way. For example, the face of Jesus is not shown in the videos as a way to acknowledge how Muslims show respect to prophets. And to create even more common ground with the Muslim audience, the missionary author then wrote 10 Old Testament stories. A full media strategy was developed to reach and follow up with seekers through an app and social media presence. This was a huge project for GMPI and quite an investment. This is an amazing story. God continued to write new chapters. After hours of prayer, phone calls, meetings, God provided 249 investors to underwrite the significant cost of animation. But the project's challenges were not only financial. The work continued through intense political unrest, the loss of eight out of 10 animators who quit over fears of working on such a big Christian project. And then COVID-19 lockdowns. Despite every setback, God remained faithful. And now, after over 3,000 work hours per episode, all 20 episodes are complete. It's finally done. But really, it's just beginning. The English template is set for many more languages. We're beginning to see the huge vision God had for these amazing stories. I never dreamed that it would go this way. It's so much bigger. Mm, what started out as just one small book for a few will now tell God's story to children everywhere. Isn't that amazing? I think so. Let that set for a moment. Two continents, thousands of hours, incredible big gifts and incredible amounts of little gifts, all to do one project over a decade or more is just an amazing thing. And I'd like to have an opportunity to introduce to you now a very good friend of mine, former missionary teammate, Sean Tyler, who's driven all the way up from Lubbock, Texas today with his lovely wife, Linda. And uh, they have come up here with a wonderful colleague as well, Dr. Shannon Raines. Uh, she is the uh, professor of children's ministries at Lubbock Christian University, where also Sean teaches. And so uh, we are honored to have them as our honored special guests. But Sean is just a very unique individual. He kind of thinks he's funny sometimes. He has taught me everything I think I may have and know when it comes to punnery. We actually did at a missionary conference years ago an entire workshop on the theology of humor and the mission field. I don't know if he remembers that. But Sean Tyler is very gifted, not only as a communicator sharing the word of God, but he's also one who is a wonderful missionary, colleague, co-worker, innovator, entrepreneur, and so many things. He's one that at the mission level, when he was nearly 30 years over in both Kenya and Uganda, serving in Kenya from 1981 to 1994 with his lovely wife and family, then moving over to next door Uganda from 1995 to 2012, and then moving 2012 to Lubbock, 
uh, Texas and teaching, as I mentioned, at Lubbock Christian University from 2012 until present. He's a very, very strong mobilizer, an elder at a local church, as I said, entrepreneur. And while in Kenya and in Uganda, helped us develop programs for leadership training of missionaries and of leadership training of nationals. He helped start a Christian university in Mbali, Uganda. He helped start Messiah, Messiah Theological Institute. He helped start an orphanage in neighboring Kenya. And so this is a brother that has all kinds of ideas. And one of those ideas was how about writing some stories about what God is doing, but to take a different kind of angle. And we actually called the project originally New Angle Media, because as he's probably going to explain is what you'll hear, there was really taking a new twist on some very common stories. So at this time, I'd like to introduce you my esteemed author of the Amazing Story Scripts and friend, Mr. Sean Tyler. Welcome, Sean. Let me uh, pull out my 14-page speech here. That's supposed to be punny also, I guess. <laughs> well, I would say this day has been a long time. <laughs> Didn't even get my first sentence out. This day has been a long time in coming. From the first meetings that we had in Nairobi in 2006, through the years of writing and editing, searching for an, art, an artist, and then backing up again to find an animator, and then all of the delays that's mentioned on the video that we just saw, all contributed to for what was for me a 16-year process, project, to reach tonight. Not only for me, but for GNPI also. We've, we've wrestled with those years, haven't we? And so it, it, is, it is extremely sweet to celebrate this evening and this day. I, I, was, I took this idea of maybe a different angle of stories. You know, the thing is, we read the scriptures a lot. We read the Bible stories, and we get used to just, yeah, 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 I know the story, I know the story. And I thought, we, we need a fresh way of looking at those Bible stories and so why not tell it from one of the other people involved in the story, from their perspective, and, and maybe even ask, what would they tell somebody else years later, or something like that? We took that in uh, as an idea to GNPI, and they embraced that, that vision of creating children's books for parents. And I was hoping to see uh, East African parents bonding more with their children in East Africa. And then... They took it and expanded it way beyond uh, what I had already thought was a big dream. They challenged me at one point to skip the printing and the cost distribution cost for the moment go straight to animation. And that could be uploaded into the internet and then downloaded by people all the way around the world, not just East Africa. Well, I have to say I immediately saw the wisdom of that and the greater scope and the plan that they were suggesting, and I wisely agreed, quickly agreed to that. I don't want to say, GNPI really deserves all the credit for taking some concept and, and, and producing this. What they were the ones that brought in and oversaw all of the technical skills for the artwork, for the design work, for the animation, the websites, the apps, and all the other kind of technical uh, details. Too long to list here, and I'm sure I would miss everything. They researched, even researched the best colors, maybe, to cult use culturally. Uh, the right translation for Jesus' name the right kind of clothing and apparel, head coverings, and many other cultural cues that they embedded into these, these characters on these videos in order to maximize the impact and reduce the number of obstacles, maybe stumbling blocks for those who'd be watching them. While the initial work and input was very time consuming, a lot of work, a lot of study has been put into that. I, GNPI, and I believe that all that attention to the details 
is going to pay off huge benefits, spiritual benefits over the coming years. To Mike Shragi, president of GMPI, and I want to say thank you for your tireless fundraising on that. To Bob Sartoris and to Nathaniel Dunn, to the monumental work of the animation team in a Muslim country of whom I would like to name specifically, but I won't. God knows who you are. To the numerous consultants, technicians, organizers, writers, communications experts, I want to say humbly thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for letting me see a dream come true. Tonight, my heart is filled, filled with great joy, not just for achieving a goal, but for being able to see a community of believers who have been formed together and shared in the labor of this and now share in the joy of its success. I'd be remiss to uh, forget to mention Dr. Raines, who's with us tonight. She has organized students this semester at Lubbock Christian University in the spring here to work on developing some materials, study materials for the videos. And, and I hope uh, Dr. Doug Darby is online with us also at LCU. He uh, was not able to join us tonight, but he's organized uh, students this semester in going into the videos and making capturing shots in order to develop uh, interactive books which would be another special application for these videos. I appreciate so much their eagerness to join in the efforts in creating what I would consider a multi-dimensional spiritual resources for a world audience. I believe this collaborative effort illustrates a biblical principle found in Ecclesiastes. Let me paraphrase and contextualize that from chapter four, verses nine to 12 for this project. Two are better than one. And a large group of Christians committed to a single goal is even better because they have a good return for their labor. I, I believe that is a promise embedded in there. If one of them falters, then another one can help them up. And though one may grow tired and be overcome by the work, two can accomplish more and a large group can achieve great things. A cord of three strands, four strands, 50 strands is not quickly broken. However, as the video that we just saw said, the creation and completion of the 20 videos is really only the beginning of all of this. We now need to take these videos and with much prayer, hand them over to Jesus like the little boy with the two fishes and the few loaves and let Jesus miraculously multiply their reach, their usage, their messages, and their impact for his kingdom. May the influence of these videos go way beyond anything that we can either think or imagine. And I want you to know I can imagine some pretty big things. I'm especially grateful and honored to be a part of a project by which we can offer these videos and these materials and future books online at no cost to Christians around the world. We have the ability to share resources with those who have no money to purchase such spiritual tools on their own. And we hope to share them in languages that they understand. We have and we give freely. They need and they receive freely. Last night I was visiting with Brian Harrison. He's the director for Pioneer Bible Translators for all of Sub-Sahara Africa. And he asked me, how do I get a hold of these videos? We want to use these. We want to, we, I want to introduce them to PBT and get them out in those. I think that I, I'm sitting here and thinking like, oh my goodness, where will this thing go in the future? Again, I'm trying to imagine big in this whole process. Let me speak 
a blessing over all of the, us and this unfolding pre project. May the Lord bless GNPI. May the Lord bless all of our efforts and every specific video story. May God be glorified as we exhibit the kingdom principles of love, of generosity, and community across the ethnic, cultural, and national boundaries that exist in this world. May unbelievers also see this demonstration of mutual sharing as a true mark of God's global church and that may they be drawn to it to become a part of it as well. Amen. sync is a real challenge yeah and it's kind of fun though I mean it's fun to have that kind of a challenge I have heard that you may be able to interpret these dreams for me um, but they're powerful stories and it's exciting to be a part of bringing it all to life just excited about people who don't know these stories to get to hear them and experience them and, and see God in these amazing uh, amazing stories. Yeah. You see what I did there? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Didn't mean to, but uh, but it is. It's just fascinating to see uh, God's work uh, in our lives today. But wow, it just comes alive in the Bible. Thank you for the opportunity to greet you via video on this uh, amazing evening. And uh, you know, my history with GMPI goes back to 1995 when I was first their video producer and then executive director. Did a lot of project there, had so much fun doing it. Then in 2008, my wife and I, we moved to America. But GMPI still continue to reach out to us and give us opportunity to serve with them. Mostly with the Nomad training. We've done several trainings. Then last year, GMPI approached me and said, would you help us dub uh, amazing stories into English? I paused for a moment and then I asked, did you say English? They say, yep. So I said, so this wasn't done in English? No, nope, it was done in Bahasa. I went like, okay, interesting, because I've always done uh, dubbing from English to another language. I've done so many of that, it's so easy for me, but I've never done it in English. So this will be a first. And I've never worked with non-professionals. I've always worked with professionals. So GMPI said, well, you know, we have a whole bunch of volunteers that are willing to help. I go like, volunteers? Yep. So I'm never one that string away from a challenge. So I said, okay, let's do it. What amazed me was when I went to Joplin, wow, the talent you have there, it's amazing. Boy, working with you, it didn't even feel like I was working with non-professionals. You know, maybe semi-professional, I'm not one to go wow and exaggerate. You guys are great to work with. You know, you probably have a hard time understanding my accent. Or maybe right now you're watching this video and go like, what in the world is this guy saying? I don't understand what he's saying. But anyway, all you need to know is that 
thank you so much. You guys did a great job and enjoy this evening. Amazing stories will go to the ends of the earth. Well, Donald, if you're listening, thank you. We enjoy your yellow characteristics and your humor and your color. And we thank you for your engineering and working with volunteers who, yes, we agree. We have a very, very gifted uh, pool of volunteers. We had various organizations from Ozark Christian College and Christ in UCIY and LATM and others that just in and around just said, yeah, I can do that. I can be that voice. I can bring in my child. I can do that part. And uh, that has just been fabulous. Sean, thank you for having the vision and for your wonderfully crafted words and, and kind uh, work in that regard of sharing how the vision started. But backing up to understand that this was about a man writing some stories from a different angle, familiar stories, and to have them in print for a book. And then backing up and say, let's change this and make it digital. And so the same principle was, as Don talk, Donald talked about it, it was written and developed overseas for several reasons. One, it was much more economical. Two, we were targeting at that point the country with the largest Islamic population on the planet. Number three, we wanted to see it be built and developed with an international thought so that its very essence and nuance was international and not American. So while an American wrote these stories, they were stories from a Bible that has come from the Eastern mindset and has been augmented in its development in ethos and then translated in that language so that the perceptions, everything feels very non-American but very global and international at the very DNA essence of what GMPI is all about. And then we have someone who's not even American in sense, so Donald is almost like one of us, to go ahead and be the director of all the audio talent as we moved it from the Bahasa and then back translated over into the English, as he said, again. Lots of talent, lots of interspersing of the American and the international and back again. I wanted to talk just a moment as well about what that requires in terms of technology. And as you caught maybe early on in one of the earlier videos, there was that time when there was a student at ORU down the road in Tulsa, Oklahoma, who came up here and had a tour. And because of that tour, had a kind of epiphany moment that brought him back to his home country to create a new ministry that would be part business and part, as we would consider it, nonprofit. The business venture would be called Dreamlight World Media. And those would be the people that technologically we would go hand in hand in in partnership. They would catch the vision for this so much so that they would discount the rated price that they would charge us to do this project. They would be discounting not only the, it would be on a certain line of contractual, but said if it takes longer, we will go longer with you. They were very willing. And as we shared with some of the challenges with different uh, animators working and then leaving and all of that, they were all so patient with us. And then to go ahead and say at one point, they even were willing to give a gift in kind of hours that were donated to this project as they were very fully convinced as they got into it. This is something that's going to be unlike anything we have ever put our hand to. So it has been beautifully crafted and has had a lot of technical work there. And the man there, Echo, I'll leave it at that, has left a big ripple of echoing across back to America as well. And because of the patience they had and because of what they have donated, it has been matched on this side with patience as well. There have been our staff, many of them here tonight in Joplin, we appreciate each one of you, but their special call out deserves, I think, for several, like Greg, who's handling the switching back and forth in the back of our place here in Joplin on this program tonight and working a lot with a scratch track. Nathaniel Dunn working so much on smoothing out a lot of the uh, elements of the scripting itself and interviewing and working on lining up all of the people who would actually do the media work. DJ working some. There's several others, Deanna. 
Miller, there are several that I could mention all of them would be a little bit longer time, but just those are some of the key people on this project here from the coordinating and, and kind of the, uh, oh, technical sense, if you will. But we had a project years ago that was called The Global Gospel. And while there was a lot of people who in our office have lots of vision and are administrative, there are people who also work with technology as well and then videography. And every once in a while, you'll have a bit of a germ aha moment that comes from within the ranks, from within the technical department. And that was what happened with the Global Gospel. Because while there were other people who had designed it and envisioned it and so forth, there was a guy on staff with us who had an additional thought. It was kind of the precursor, Sean, to blowing the mind with New Angle Media or with amazing stories. And with the Global Gospel, that gentleman's name was Stan Waite. I believe that the thousands and hundreds of thousands of hours that he has put into 42, lang 42 languages to finish them off that we have of the global gospel is going to be a remarkable credit to his account. However, as Paul Harvey would say, the rest of the story is that he's the one who worked with Nathaniel and Gray and Deanne and Sean and others to come again and actually say, Sam, would you pause for a year and would you put your prowess and your abilities to help us do all of that tedious work of getting it lined up that we could transition and record from Bahasa now into the English? Would you do that for us? He said, yes. And again, hundreds, thousands of hours. And when Donald came here, as he said, ready to work with volunteers, Stan and the team had everything so well outlined that with those 40 plus voices, they knocked it all out in less than two weeks. Unheard of. And no one but those two gentlemen were the professional part. Everyone else was coming as volunteers. That was also pretty amazing. So, as a result of that amazing man's work for the global gospel, and that amazing man's work that will set the amazing story project on a great trajectory, we want to issue the first ever Oscar from within the ranks of GNPI to go to none other than Stan Waite for his work in the production arena of Amazing Stories. Stan Waite, come up here, my friend. Thank you, my brother. We love you. We appreciate you, and you have done a fabulous, fabulous job. I won't embarrass you and force you to make a speech. I'll release you there. <laughs> Thank you very much. Let's see some of Stan's work. Okay, girls, it's time for bed. Mama, would you tell us a story? Oh, no, not again. When will the two of you get tired of hearing that story? Are you two wanting to stay up longer and not go to sleep? No, Mama, please. We promise we'll go to sleep if you tell us right now. Tell us all the things that you and Grandpa can remember. We never get tired of hearing it. Oh, please, Mom, tell us the story. Okay, okay. Settle down. 
and let me begin the story. Several years ago, Jesus was returning from his trip to Gerasene when a large group of people met him. Among them was a synagogue ruler named Jairus. Jairus came to Jesus and fell at his feet. He begged Jesus, saying, My only little daughter is dying. Please, please come and help us. Would you come and simply put your hands on her so that she will be healed, so she will live? Jesus started to go with Jairus to his house, but some men came from there and met them on the way. They were saying, I'm so very sorry, but your daughter is dead. Why bother the teacher anymore? Jesus completely ignored what these men were saying. Instead, he focused all of his attention on Jairus and said to him, Oh, don't be afraid. Just believe, and she will be healed. When Jesus reached Jairus' home, he saw people crying. Jesus went into the house and said to all of those who were present, Why all this crying and wailing? This child is not dead. She is just asleep. But they laughed at him. They already knew that the girl was dead. Jesus put them all out of the house. And then he took the child's father and mother, and he went in to where the child was lying on the bed. Jesus took her hand and said to her, Little girl, I say to you, get up. Jairus and his wife were so very, very surprised. Their daughter was alive again. She stood up, ran to them, and gave them a big hug. They were so amazed to see the miracle that Jesus had just performed on their little girl. Jesus ordered the parents not to tell anyone what had happened. Of course it was difficult not to let anyone know what had happened. The whole community had already heard that the little girl had died. Everyone was amazed. They wanted to know how exactly this miracle had happened. She was dead, but now alive again. Incredible, isn't it? More than the excitement it caused, I was just happy to have my little girl back. Every time I look at your mother, I thank Jesus for coming to my house those many years ago. Without him, I would not have her or you too. And that would indeed make me very, very sad. Jesus' visit on that day changed my whole life and my family too. Ah, Grandpa, that's it. Thank you. That's why we like this story. Okay, my sweet girls. Time for bed. Let's say your prayers and go to sleep. Can you imagine being the father of a resurrected from the dead little girl and the stories that are going on in that village? Can you imagine the discussion for your would-be son-in-law? Buddy, is it going to cost you a big, hefty bride price? I mean, my girl, she's been to heaven and back. My girl, she knows what death is like. My girl, she is something special. That's just an illustration of the new angle, the new twist that Sean so incredibly inculcated in each one of those 20 stories. Someone who observed the power of God and then narrated it. And then like, in this case, now grandfather, telling his granddaughters, and as for me and my house, like Joshua of old, we are going to serve the Lord. Can you imagine what that's going to do in a community? These harmless little videos that are just nothing short than cartoons let into families, phones, tablets, computers, and like Walt Disney, knowing that if the kids will start to ease in, so will the adults, the moms, the fathers, the parents, the adults. And that is what we see as the wonderful attractiveness as well as the message itself coming from the Bible as well as the technology in illustrating the story. So again, very, very excited and pleased 
afterwards go online to check out all 20 and share them with your own children and grandchildren and others. Well, we have uh, done a lot of thinking and we need to do a little bit more. As you heard words from Donald Liao, a former full-time staff member at GMPI, now working as a freelance filmmaker here in America in the state of Virginia. Donald probably still listening. Thank you, brother, again. But we have another gentleman besides uh, Stan that we gave a uh, Oscar to that would be almost as deserving of a lot of the effort into the development of this as well. And his name is Bob Satoris. And I would trust that, uh, Bob, maybe you're listening online this evening. He's living with his family in Indianapolis, Indiana. And Bob goes a long way, just like Donald with GMPI. Bob joined uh, myself and Kirk Hayes and Tom Omemo and others in the development of our regional office of GMPI in Nairobi, Kenya years and years ago. Bob came as the first production manager of that facility, someone who had been recruited and interviewed and vetted by none other than my father-in-law, Zaiden Nutt. So Bob came with his family uh, as the production manager to that Nairobi office. Later, he would take my place as the regional director of that very office. Later on, he would come back to the USA and you know, to the Joplin office. He would take on the position of, the, of uh, VP of International Operations, the office that now uh, Nathaniel Dunn holds. But Bob always had a heart, just like Donald, for the work and ministry of GMPI. And so when we approached Bob about helping us to continue to craft the stories and to do the connection and kind of the quarterbacking with the people overseas when it came to the actual uh, animation production and so forth, we really were grateful to have his expertise to tap into. And so we are very thankful, Bob, for your work, your dedication, and that of your patience of your family, meaning several times traveling to this country, and Jane, your lovely wife and family, letting you to travel again one more time for GMPI for one more project, and this one, I think, being one of the most significant. So at this time, we uh, want you to just watch the screen and hear a personal hello from none other than Bob Satoris. Soon after Sean Tyler wrote the stories, he reached out to GMPI for help in getting these into a book format. I was part of a team that created and ultimately published the first storybook in 2017. Then, when the idea came up of producing an animated video series based on these stories, I was asked to explore ways to get it done in a country where the majority of people are Muslim. In 2016, I traveled to Asia to meet with ministry partners there and a production studio to share our ideas for the series. Their response was immediate. We need this for our children. From the start, they told us that the series needed to respect the Muslim beliefs and not do anything to offend their cultural traditions. As you may know, one of GMPI's core values is being culturally relevant for our audiences around the world. So, this was really not a problem. Muslims acknowledge and honor several people found in the Bible that are also written about in the Quran, referring to them as prophets. For instance, Noah, Abraham, Joseph, Moses, David, Solomon, even Jesus. Using these prophets for our stories gave us a perfect starting point to open up discussions with this audience. We didn't want to offend the viewers we were hoping to reach, and so we had to pay attention to the details. Simple things, like having women wear head coverings. And avoid using religious symbols in the clothing and decorations. One of the biggest choices was to not show the face of Jesus in any of the episodes. This is because Muslims believe it's a form of idolatry to show the faces of the prophets, and thus disrespectful to create pictures and statues of them. After doing other research, we also decided to use the Muslim-friendly name for Jesus, Isa al-Masi. Overall, we're confident that the final version of these stories will work well in many cultures, even where there are significant religious differences. We're excited to see how it plays for English audiences as well. So this launch is a great starting point for us to begin to track how God will use this series 
going forward. So thank you, Bob. I appreciate his insight. I hope you caught just a little bit of a tidbit of some of the cultural nuancing that went into the culture. So in wrapping it up, we want to just again say thank you to all who were involved, both internationally and out of Indianapolis and Virginia and here locally. It has really took a lot of effort and patience and talent. And speaking of talent, really do appreciate also uh, the local voice talent here locally. And so for those of you online, not sure that you can all see it, but I'd like to have a show of hands. If you were one who actually came into our studio and offered your voice as one of the 40 some voices for this, would you raise your hand right now? There we go. Thank you very much. <clears throat> we are deeply indebted to your t taking time to leave your family, come to our studio, and doing this, as I mentioned earlier, all free of charge. We are really, really appreciative. So we've got it now in two languages. English will be a template for, as Sean alluded to, many other organizations and other languages in the future. One day it may approach that 40 plus that our other project, the Global Gospel, is already in. So it has, however, not besides also the videos, it's got other pieces as well. It has, if you go to the website, you will notice the 20 can be downloaded. There will be coloring books and coloring pages for each one. There's uh, an app that's being developed for the language of Bahasa overseas. It is also going to have, because of uh, Dr. Doug Darby, who just sent a text during this saying, hey Mike, I'm online, I'm watching, hi Doug. We uh, appreciate he and his students there at Lobby Christian University. They're going to create an electronic ebook form of this that will have other animation elements to it and movable pieces to it. So there is just, as Sean has alluded, an entire group of technology assets that are going to, to help the learning process about the wonderful story of Jesus in many, many ways. And so the storybook and its activities are going to be something that we are really, really excited about. And you can find more about this, either you here in uh, Joplin, and make a note of that, or on their screen for those of you online, at amazingstories.media. You will have also social media campaigns that are written about this that use some of the elements from the amazing stories, and there's an entire plethora of ways that it can go and be used both in broadcast and in local devices and physical coloring and engagement just many, many ways that we are going to see God use this. So from the bottom of our hearts, the GMPI, from the board of directors, and oh, by the way, one of our board of directors, uh, Danny Hughes, a shout out, was the one who was that very integral, really used individual that was actually at Sean's and Linda's rented home in Uganda when the vision was first started for finding the first grant for doing this in print. He was the one used to connect with the family back in, no longer with us now, in Arizona that would supply the first 100,000 seed money for this project. And so we have that kind of board and we're very, very, very indebted to Danny and the rest of the board of directors of GMPI. And so thank you all of you. So I would just ask you to just uh, bow. We're going to just have a prayer of uh, dedication that God takes what has been a multi-year effort and multi hundred thousand dollar effort to his honor and to his glory now. Father, we are honored. We are privileged to use our skills of technology, of networking, of funding, of fundraising, of editing, of audio engineering, of directing, of technology to create an ebook, to curriculum for stories, and so much more to put it all together, Lord Jesus, so that what you have built, not the Roman roads, not the movable printing press, but the most next step phase of the internet to spread famously your good news about your son Jesus into the cultures and into the languages and into the next generation of children around the world. Father, we pray that the harvest will truly be anointed and plentiful because of the patient, diligent work that so many have done to pray, to work, to develop, to design, to travel, to give, so that this day right now would be made possible. So Father, we are dedicating this work to you. 
to ask you to anoint it, to protect it, to multiply it, and it be very, very fruitful for your honor and glory. For we pray these things always in Jesus' name. Amen. And that is amazing story. So for those of you who have been dialing online, we thank you for staying tuned. There's some uh, website information and so forth. You can share that again with others who did not make it. And for those of us in Joplin, we just want to at this time just ask you just a couple more minutes. And we are wanting to say to all of you again, I would just like to reiterate... <laughs>what's really exciting is not just the current project which is over a hundred minutes of animated video segmented into 20 different stories from the old and new testament that are going to be fully animated it's the story behind the story about how this partnership all began for each episode we need 3,000 until 3,500 hours for each episode from uh, pre-production production and post-production